Join me for a watercolor tutorial. You'll need watercolor paper, tape, pencils, and an eraser, your watercolor paint palette, brushes in a variety of sizes, a cleanish rag, and some cleanish water. To begin, I just drew a rough outline of what my bird's head and body will look like so I can see which areas I need to keep clean. Then I'm going to fill in the bird's body with the golden yellow color that I achieved by mixing my yellow paint with just a touch of orange. I started out with very diluted color, so I did have to build up quite a few layers of paint before I felt it was dark enough. I then added a few drops of orange along the top and around the outline of my bird's body. I let this dry for a few minutes and then use the same color to start painting the wings and tail feathers. You'll see that I also add orange at the tips and on the outlines the same way that I did to the body. This creates a really pretty golden yellow that I just love. All of this orange and yellow will ultimately be the underpainting of my finished watercolor piece, which means I'm going to layer other colors on top of it to create dimension and depth. I let this dry again and start mixing some blue and green for my feather details. With a detail brush, I'm going to carefully outline the very top of my bird's head with blue-green paint. I'm also going to do this for the tops of my bird's wings, kind of where their elbow would be if birds had elbows. And in any spot where the blue is overlapping with my yellow underpainting, I use the dampness of the detail brush to blend the colors just slightly to get rid of any defined lines that might show up. Here I'm adding blue feather tips on my bird's wings. Now on the reference photo that I used, the bird did not have blue feather tips like this and from what I've seen in real life and in photos, birds of this species only actually have blue on the outside of their wings, so there wouldn't be this much blue actually visible. But this is just a painting and I really like this color, so in my imagination I wanted the wings to have more blue on them and so that's what I did. And to anyone who is into realism or hyperrealism, I'm really sorry if this offends you. And you should probably stop watching now because I'm going to do the same thing to the other wing and then also to the tail feathers. You can see that the same as my yellow, I started out with a lighter blue to indicate where my shapes would be before adding drops of more blue pigment until I achieved a color dark enough to my liking. While I'm doing this, I'm also keeping in mind that the bird's beak is going to be a pretty dark color, so it's okay if any blue paint gets around or on the beak area. While I was adding blue to the tail feathers, you can see that I did accidentally smudge the wet paint. In this instance, I was able to correct the mistake by using a clean shading brush to remove any blue pigment from the paper, and thankfully it is not noticeable at all on the finished painting. Now I'm just adding streaks of blue to my bird's tail feathers so that I can start adding more definition and shaping them. I use the dampness of my detail brush to blend the layers of color. I also do this for my wing feathers. As I'm adding more and more layers of paint, the colors do start to get a little bit muddy. This is okay though, as I can use this to create shadows and to give more shape to the body. But since we started with super bright yellow and blue, it can seem like a big change, but I promise it will be okay. This muddiness will look totally fine in the end. Now I'm just gonna go through and continuously add layers of blue paint 
to my wings and my tail feathers and blend those layers with previous ones. Here I'm using a clean detail brush with clean water to lift and blend the yellow pigment to create additional definition. And now I'm just using blue paint to create shadows to contour my bird's body and match the color a little bit more closely to the wings. For the beak I mix black, brown, and purple paint, then I just add this color to the entire beak area. After this dries, I will come back to it for more detail. I let the entire painting dry for a few minutes before starting any black details. Black is such a pigmented color that I want to ensure that wherever I place it is completely dry to prevent smudging and running. In this case, I'm only going to outline my beak as well as add some details to the face and collar of the bird. For the feet, I'm going to do the same thing as the beak, starting with the purple, brown, black combination and then using plain black to outline. Now I'm just going to touch up any areas that need it. Mainly this is going to be using water and a clean brush to blend out any unwanted lines, but it's also going to be any last minute shading and contouring of the wings and body, as well as any last minute detail work. Once I'm happy with it, I remove my tape and then add my signature and the year. Thanks for watching. See you next time.